It shocks me how people still don't take my advice when it comes to shows you should watch. Over the years, I have given you the best descriptions about shows. The Men's Club is a show about rich guys and rich girls in Lagos. Skinny Girl in Transit is a show about love, but even though it has so many well-nourished characters that we have come to love and relate to, we will always stand Shaliwa. Oga Pastor is a show about <laughs> no one knows, to be honest. But what I'm trying to tell you is, I know shoes. Believe me, I know rumor has it was about a cycle. Giddy Up was about a horse. Best Friends in the World is a show that studies the life of Barney's children after the show ended. Now we have the most toasted girl, named after Genevieve. Obviously. Toasted Girl is a show about Nengi who gets toasted a lot by Nigerian men. And I don't know what you've heard about Nigerian men, <laughs> but they are the worst. Trust me, I'm one. I know we are the worst. I know you might be wondering, how do you know her name if she never mentioned it throughout the show? So watch this. Okay, here's my father's number, my mother's number, my sister's number. Call her if you can reach me. My email address. Add the numbers on all social media platforms. Episode 1 established her as an IJGB who is in love with working out and in a somewhat American way also knows how to deal with Nigerian men. Her first ever toaster in the show was a stereotypical Igbo man that had a very bad Ibotic accent and breathes like he's on life support. Man, take my number now. Take my number. <coughs> what, what the number? Man, you stupid bitch! He gave her money to get her number, but Nengi, <laughs> who is this prankster, in return for his money, gave him her mom's number and yeeted out of there. Episode 2 followed the same pattern. She gets toasted by this Yoruba man named God's Plan. But the only difference here is that the Igbo man, wait for it, is smarter than this oh, man. I know, it's hard to believe. Oh. Even myself, I found it hard to believe. He was so desperate that he had to pray for her just for the bow man to spoil his game. I got my damn and children now. Shit like this is what I definitely don't like. In episode 3, she bumps into someone named Chris and she instantly starts daydreaming over him in his presence. And I won't lie, I do this a lot. As soon as I see a very fine babe, I have already pictured our Lini. The difference between this man and everyone else who she has seen was that this guy was way more suited for her compared to the previous daddies oh, she has been seeing. They hit it off immediately and the question is why not? He is young, fair, and has packs. The three antidotes used to make the perfect little girls. The pop of them. But the happiness did not last for so long because his mom spoiled his parade by exposing him for being a serial impregnator. You find your Christopher Ete Tuku? How many friends will you have in Lagos? The other friend you impregnated is in the hospital. What for us to bring food? Please stop this madness. What do you want from me? After the third episode, the production value increased and the length of each episode got longer and longer. <coughs> like me. <laughs> episode 4 introduced her friend who is this colorist. And let me be honest, I can't pronounce her name. Ibinabo! Oh, I did it! I actually did it! But every time I pronounce it, I may have to sound like that. Ibinabo! Nengi goes for this blind date, but knowing how bad her dates have been, she already googled him beforehand, and she was satisfied with the way he looked. But the shocker in this episode was her friend. Ibinabo! So, Ibinabo! went to the same restaurant and there was this confusing moment because initially Nengi refused to go out with her saying she had a work deadline. But Nengi saved herself by using the trick that only shallow babes would fall for. Then her date comes, and he's this dark guy named Kanso, and the awkwardness began. Both girls start fighting for his attention, but I knew he would pick in the end. And it was the girl with no humor, no substance, just beauty. Ebinabo! Because that's how men think. We initially we say, oh, we want a girl with humor who would understand us and joke around. But I bet you guys, in an instant, we are going to trade any babe for a supermodel. Immediately, I love babes with no substance, man. <laughs> and then the episode ended with Kanso giving Nengi a job opportunity. Episode 5, she goes out with this weird man, but before her bad date, she first saw this man that seemed so nice and romantic. Then he spoiled it by doing what every guy in Nigeria has done at the point in his life. Oh. 
But at first, her date seemed cool, he was smart, and girls like smart guys. She he was money oriented and he also wanted the best for her. And he spoke about investment, and I don't know if you know this, but every girl's weak point these days is the word investment. Just talk on how you invest your money, and that's it. She's in love. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. But everything scattered when he said they should go Dutch. Anyway, two words. Go Dutch. They had this funny bit where he brought out his calculator, oh! indirectly telling us that this is what he normally does. He would ask a girl out and tell them at that moment that they should go Dutch. That's genius, man. I swear I'm going to do it next. By the end, she was able to beat him in his own game. In episode 6, which was the most popular episode, it followed Nengi and her ex boyfriend. The episode was a huge roller coaster. She met this man that seems to follow her everywhere she goes, and her ex came to rescue. What's going on here now? You know that one ex that you can't completely get over? <laughs> They spoke and he gave her bubu about how he isn't in love with his wife. I don't love her. She's not you. Stop the cow. <laughs> this is where everything went downhill. So his daughter came and called Nengi Loretta. And I won't lie for a moment, this man considered acting like he did not know that that girl was his daughter. Then his fiance came from nowhere and his baby mama also came and you start wondering, is, is there a portal at the back. How do they keep coming from that same place? He tries to explain but fails and all three of them did a train on his face and slapped the living hell out of him. Yo. Yeah. Episode 7, she went out with a baby. That's it. <laughs> he was a tech guy that did not have access to his phones. Episode 8 was dark. Very dark in a subtle way. He started off with her singing a little. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. What is that? And she surprisingly got scouted by this man called Young Lagos, who is apparently popular. Stop the cap. But his deal here is that he wants to feature her in his song and they go back to his house. He comes up with this genius idea of making the most DIY song ever. What that means is that they would sing, mix, and master on a phone. It doesn't end there. They would also make a music video on that same phone. <laughs> Maravi. Shady Maggie. Everything with this guy just seemed so sketchy. His producer called PH hasn't spoken in years, and after dropping one of the most weirdly interesting songs ever, he does this. Babe, you can't just leave like that now. You're not a baby, you know how the game is. You have to show some love. And from there, everything goes dark. As he tried to have his way with her, she tasted him, also tasted PH. This babe now, big my career now. I'm sorry now. <laughs> I ah, I beg, I beg. You did not think about that one before. I what those vibes? No, listen, babe, what those <laughs> vibes? <now? laughs> then she used his studio to make her theme song for the most toasted girl. And that was how it ended. The things I loved about the show was this guy. I did not get it at first, but it hit me later on. He works for every restaurant that she goes to. And that's genius. I actually like Easter eggs. Everyone on this show who acted felt like they enjoyed the craft and no one seemed inexperienced, if you get what I mean. What I did not like were some endings. Episode 1 will definitely, I mean this in all honesty, will definitely never happen in Nigeria. And the episode with the Dutch payment will also not happen this way. It will probably just end up with them fighting. Okay, my advice for the show is all the episodes are good, but a more in-depth character is what I feel should come next. And why this should happen is because we need to know her motive. Why is she so goofy? What makes her tick except from the men from Lagos? Why is she not a lesbian? <laughs> why is her name Ibinabo? <laughs> I feel the next season should tackle these questions and I know this is a lot and the only way it can happen is if we support her by watching the show and sharing it. If you also have money to help her out, also do, please. Because they definitely have something here and I would love to see another season of it. And also, please, bring back Ebinaba! Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I enjoyed making this video, even if I've not edited it yet, but I enjoyed making it. I enjoyed watching the episodes. They were nice. I like the fact that they were short. 
I think they have something here and if they keep pushing it would it will be big. I think they should just keep um the what they call it. They should keep the style of toasters but just have like let's just know more. It should not like it should not be like skinny girl in transit but it should just I don't know just a background to her. That that would be lovely. Um yeah, thank you guys for watching. Question of the gear that's a girl. <laughs> Question of the day is um what was your worst toasting experience oh my goodness i've had a lot but if you want to know mine go to my podcast linked below thank you all my patreons i appreciate your money and um, if you want to support my channel also consider being a patreon the link to my patreon is in the description thank you guys for watching um bye <laughs>